No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world, and today I feel incredibly lucky to have two of the most iconic, really two of the most iconic rappers that have existed since my, you know, time listening to rap. Like, I, I just want to get that across firsthand, that I'm hugely appreciative and I, I have a huge amount of respect for everything that you guys have accomplished. And I feel like even though I became a fan in maybe 97, so I missed out on some of the pivotal early years that I feel like I've just been along for this ride for a long time and I'm deeply invested in how you guys are doing in life. So this means a lot to me. Dope, man. That's a hell of a compliment, man. Hey, you know, that means a lot to us, man. We've been saying all day, man. Anybody, anybody like um, says that like we're a part of hip hop or like super accomplished in hip hop or like any type of shit like that. Mm. We're so blessed like to, just to hear that from anybody. You know what I'm saying? We've Especially, been you know the, what I'm saying? We've always been the most hated band in the world, you know? Word up. And um, always, you know, it, it's always surprising to us how we, we didn't want to be labeled old school. Mm. You know, we fought to, to not be labeled old school. We feared being labeled old school for so long. And now that we're officially old school, it's... It's by great. far the most rewarding time of our whole career. Word up. It's but like, it's it's like more... serving your time in the army and you get out. You know what I'm saying? You just skip, sit back and like get your benefits. You know what right. I'm saying? It's really cool, man, because like we got, you know, people just like what you said, giving it up to us. And it's really like mind blowing to hear that about us because it's always been fucked them. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it, and it feels great to hear that, that type of shit, man. Feels it feels good it nowadays. It means a lot to know? us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I mean, Big just time. in the sense that you guys were kind of the first ones through the wall. Like it was, it was very much a time period in the mid, late 90s where it was just very like hip hop was not very open or welcome. Like, I mean, we saw the way that Eminem was received and yeah. he was much closer to the center of like what you could imagine from an average rapper at the time. You guys are obviously on another fucking planet, but it's like, it's just crazy because now hip hop seems like hugely, uh, you know, interested in anybody who's doing anything out of the ordinary. It's like, you guys were probably like 20 years too early in a way. Hey, you're right about that, man. I think that's fucking, yo, that's nice. I, I like hearing that. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah. We seen uh, it kicking about like all these SoundCloud rappers and shit, like doing ill shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. But back in the day, we was doing ill shit way before ill shit was ill shit. You know? Mm, that's dope, man. Um, yeah, you know, uh, we were, you know, a lot of times we didn't feel like we, you know, like as far as, far as alternative rock, they didn't want us to. Like, man, them guys mm. ain't even got a band. That ain't that shit ain't rock. You know? And then <clears throat> in hip hop, it was like. Oh man, look, them guys got face paint on and shit. Them are clowns, man. That ain't hip hop, you know. We didn't really have nothing to belong to, but I think that's changed in today's world. I think mm. we're hip hop, you know. But what I'm the saying? thing is, before we and had that's nothing what we to cling always to, wanted to be, you know, <laughs> we found our own thing to cling to, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Until like now, we're getting accepted, which is cool, you know what I'm saying? But we been have we we been had our own thing to cling to, you know what I'm saying? Which mm -hmm. is Juggalo world, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But now it's starting to get more accepted. The juggalo shit is, you know what I'm saying? Which we're is cool, always going to you know be juggalo, saying? you know. But, yeah, but, but hip hop is, is where our heart is, you know. That's no what we consider ourselves hip hop artists, you so know. So to, to feel accepted in the hip hop, hip hop world, like, yo, you guys are hip hop icons, do the do. It's like crazy to us because nope. it feels so fucking good, you know what I'm saying? Nowadays, you I know. I mean, as time went by, it just became more and more obvious that, you know, you guys, you have to respect what you guys created, even if it wasn't aimed at mainstream hip hop fans. But at the same time, it's like that is really why it's dope. Like you guys broke open. Like we we don't often talk talk about hip hop as like a community, and you know, doing this is good for hip hop or good for the scene or whatever. I know like a lot of other like types of music or subcultures I've been a part of that those conversations happen a lot. Like oh, like is this good for this type of music or whatever? But in a way, you guys made hip-hop way bigger in a way because all those Midwest flyover states that probably wouldn't have necessarily felt as, you know, it took something as weird as what you guys were doing for them to feel like more of a direct connection to the music. <clears throat> no doubt, no doubt. I think, I think, yeah, I agree with that, man. I, I, I think um, it, it may have connected the dots for a lot of people, man. And a lot of people that, that may have felt really distant from hip-hop till something wild like us happened, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and and we've heard plenty of times throughout our career, man, uh, you guys are the only hip-hop I listen to. We've heard that, too, you know what I'm saying? So, But you know what is, is dope as shit? We're the first ones to put Ghetto Boys back together in how many years? 
You know what I'm saying? What year was that? We done records with Q. We done records with Dove. See, we did records with Mac 10. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's one of our proudest shining moments is when we put fucking the Ghetto Boys back together for for our record. You know what I'm saying? That was on the the Mighty Death Pop album, which was, what year was that? They ain't worked together in years and years and years. And somehow on our record, we got Ghetto Boys, Bushwick, Bill, Willie D, and Scarface all together on one fucking record. Right. You know what I'm saying? With us. That was like 2000. (laughs) It was great. Oh, what's that? Like 2000, yeah, something, something like that. that. 14, but 15, they, they had something. been together in years when we did that, man. Yeah, that, that's up. like our, 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 well, I think our that's fucking our idols. Group, you know what I'm saying? You know, what up? Group, yeah, yeah. You know. I remember probably 99 when the, the album after the Great Malenko came out, and I was like, holy fuck, these guys can do songs with Snoop and Old Dirty Bastard? Because that was that when you guys had like really finally signed and they were like, okay, here's some money for you guys to get features? Yeah, yeah see yeah, what yeah. happened it was, was all about money. We're going to help you guys become <laughs> yeah. real rappers now. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we tried to apply That was a, a money tactic. game back then. We tried to apply a tactic that we used when we were local. When we first came out in Detroit, there was there was two artists in, in, hip, in rap that were killing it. One one's name was Esham. It's local mm-hmm. Detroit shit now. Oh, yeah. yeah, one's name was Esham, and the other one was Kid Rock. Mm-hmm. And they were both like, "This is an old version of Kid They're Rock." They're murdering you know? this shit. I you remember know because Kid Rock used this to Kid have Rock songs when he used to be an MC before he's a country singer. Because he was in like he was down with some like BMX scene type shit. So I was in the like underground BMX scene, and I would see videos from like a couple years before and realize like, "Holy shit, these guys were just this before cool that." With Kid Rock. This yeah. before yeah. that. Like, like ninety six method. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. What you're talking about the polyfuse method. Yeah, this is before that shit. Right. You're talking about like ninety one. He had, 92. He had like a high top fade. Yeah, word up. It was crazy looking. Yeah. And um, uh, it was all crooked. When he <laughs> first came out, you know, way back in the day, he was just a kid too. And um, he was all kids. But the other yeah. one was uh, Esham. They were both like, like there was a, a chain in Michigan called Harmony House. Mm-hmm. They had like 36 stores. But uh, if they carried your shit, you know, you were about you to, was official. You were about to you You're know, official. Be That's it. And. Uh, so we got Esham on a track, and we got Kid Rock on a track. We we paid Esham five hundred bucks. This is cassette and, days. Like yeah, the yeah. last track had Esham on one side. You flip it over, it had Esham on the last side. On the other side. You know like, what I'm saying? There was a was grand like, finale on both sides. Yeah. Kid Rock was like, Esham did it. We're like, yeah. He's like, how much? We're like five hundred. He was like. I'll do it for six. You putting out numbers on us? <laughs> you putting out numbers? Yeah, then we're going to still come in and try to get, get features for that rate right, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want Kid Rock eShop, it's $500, $600. Sorry about that. But we got them both on the record, and that, that got us in Harmony House. That got us attention in Michigan. Yeah, action so action finally, distribution. When Malenko came out and, and went national for us, you know, we were like, man, Maybe we'll try the same, same tactics. Tactic Word up with, with two accepted right. hip hop names, uh, Snoop Dogg and Old Dirty Bastard. East Coast, West Coast, mm-hmm. instead of East Side of Detroit, West Side of Detroit. We right. put them on the record, and you know, and, and tried the same tactic. Right, you know what I'm saying, but um, it didn't Actually, exactly no, that work. Was two, that, that was on Jekyll Brothers, man. That wasn't even Snoop was on. Oh, okay, I thought you were talking about. Uh, never mind. Okay, so for the people at home, like brothers, man. Right. So for the people at home, though, like you guys had this insane moment, and this is—I was just telling them. uh, This is when I became a fan. Is like you know, I'm sitting at my friend's house. I think it's '97. We're watching MTV, and they're like, "There's a group called the Insane Clown Posse, and they just put out a new record." And Disney immediately pulled it off the shelves, and like me and my boys, that's all we had to hear. Like, boom, we got to figure out what this shit's about. That was our insane moment, right there. But okay, so leading up to that. How would you describe where your career was at? Did you have any clue that that was going to be this huge pivotal moment? No, absolutely not. Check it out. We we started out to be rappers, you know what I'm saying? And we knew we were going to be rappers. That was it, you know? And the, the whole thing was, it's like we came out with our first record, second record, that do. You'll probably tell it better than me, you know what I'm saying? But once we got signed to fucking Disney, this shit was like fucking, we were like, that's it. Right. It's off the hook. That's it. We're done. You know what I'm saying? We're, we're blowing the fuck up. Mm-hmm. And then they dropped us, and we thought the game was over. That's it. We're done. Mm. And so then we, you, we you weren't thinking, oh, there's out. a bright side to this. Absolutely right. not. And all of a sudden, it blew up on the alternative press or whatever the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And then all of a sudden, boom. You know, that's a very short version. He's about to get me on this one. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that that was, uh, that was uh, you know, we, we, we had, we had uh, worked it locally. We we got to we sold about seventy thousand records before we first signed our first record deal. Good mm. job. Yeah, we 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 had started out selling them ourselves. We were never part of like uh, freestyle scene or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? We started off pressing our shit up, mm-hmm. you know, and and taking flyers out to record stores and, and 
coming up that way. And we, our, our, our first two albums did like 60, 70,000. And then we signed with Jive Records. Well, hold on, hold on. Don't let me undersell that. You know what I'm saying? Like that locally, felt crazy. Locally, back in the day in Detroit, we did 60, 70,000 every record we put out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Which is fucking ludicrous. Right. Picture yeah, that now. Driving around new just, cars, just you know in saying? Detroit, right? Just in Detroit, sixty, seventy thousand units. Just and, goddamn near fucking gold. If you like, when they flipped it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And what was your just perception of that success? Like we made it, or was Yo, it like we need to sign to a major label and bottle up whatever the fuck we have? It was going the right best now. Christmas we ever had. Going around <laughs> getting consignments, we were poor as shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Going around buying our fucking parents. Christmas presents, yo, that's the best shit ever. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, we, and we were still just local at that time. We you know? signed with Jive, and Jive was a huge rap label at the time. Yeah. They yeah. had Two Short, Spice One, Tribe Called Quest. Fucking, they had mad groups. You know, they 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 were really big in rap. You know, Backstreet and, um, Boys, all of them. And uh, we uh, we put out our third album with them, and um, they just sort of put it out locally. Mm-hmm. They didn't think it was gonna do. They thought. We were just a big local deal. The clown shit, that'll never work anywhere else. Mm. It's, it's whatever's going on in Detroit. That's that's as big as you're going to be. Basically but, a tax write-off. But we kept working the shit. We kept pushing the shit, you know. We got um we got that third record, Riddlebox, up to over 100,000 units. We we bought vans and went around America and like pushed the shit ourselves. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And and the same should, tactics like, that we did in Detroit, we pulled the other cities. And you and guys Dallas didn't know who running. Master P was and didn't realize that that was the we same no tactic idea. that some other genius fucking entrepreneurs like around the P country. Master P was in the Bay Area at that time. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't even lose Louisiana at that time. You know what I'm saying? He was Bay Area. We had no fucking idea who that was. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So we threw darts at a fucking map. Everybody's so Bought separate vans. that nobody knows exactly what the fuck is happening in all parts of the country. Time, this, yeah. before, before, this is before so the this, internet, you, you know? know. The chronic was out. Like we we were seeing labels. Mm-hmm. Like we called it the Matrix. Mm-hmm. That's when that's when uh, um, a artist or a label is on top of the world. They got the Matrix. Mm-hmm. You know, we saw Jerry have it with the, the chronic death row. We were and, like, oh uh, right shit, right they got in the Matrix. Five. That's when uh, Master no, P no. started having. That was like ninety two, ninety three. And then, well, yeah, the chronic. And then around ninety five, Master P had it. You know, we started to see that happen. But um, we were just doing. Focusing on our world, you know, and, and uh, coming up the same way we always have, which are pressing up CD samplers. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, we press up, fuck, 100,000 samplers and give them away. We leave them sitting on top of a payphone anywhere. Leave them in a the sidewalk. We'd, we'd attack a high school at 3 o'clock. The school would be letting out. Everywhere. Have every club, bands. every high school, everywhere. We'd have our bands at all Across three. Across America. At all three exits. When the kids would come out of the high school, we'd just See, hand like, them samplers. There was a problem with everybody in Detroit. There was like, okay, our competition is this guy in Detroit, this guy in Detroit, this guy in Detroit. You know what I'm saying? We was like, our competition is Ice Cube. Our competition is Ice T. Our competition is uh, fucking BDP. Our competition is Luke down in Miami. You know what I'm saying? That's the mentality we had. Right. Our competition was nationwide, not fucking local bullshit. We had you know Detroit. What I'm we had Detroit on lock. We we had built Yo. that up, you know. And uh, when we signed with Jive to put out the Ringmaster Riddlebox album, what we did was we threw a, d- a dart on a map. You know, we we straight up blindfolded our manager, threw a dart on a map. It landed on Dallas, Texas. So we took our advance and we bought these three vans. We had them tricked out with the album cover on the side. They had the fat tires. And we drove those vans, filled them with samplers and posters, drove all three of them to Dallas, Texas. We stayed in Dallas for like two months. With the objective of like, let's get as hot here as we yeah, are back we home? Show, we wanted to show Jive Records. Failure was not an option. Right. We wanted to show Jive Records that we could do this anywhere. Yeah. As long as you work it. Mm-hmm. You know, we had Detroit. Now we're going to sh- pick a city, any city, and we're going to blow it up like we did Detroit, you know? That's always so, been the problem with every fucking label ever. They never knew how to market us. Never. Besides us. We're the only ones that know how to market, market and we, us. And we hit them high schools every day. We were at another high school with all three bands. Hand out thousands of samplers. we go to the cruising like strips where all the cars right? cruise up and down the boulevard. Hand that shit out. we go walk through malls. We, anywhere there's people. You see his yeah. hand doing like this? That's real shit. That's the how you, you be getting them out. <laughs> And like anywhere there was people, you know, up. we'd be up in it. There was a little fair going on, one of them little neighborhood Ooh, fairs. They get it. And um, we, uh, uh, so then we got Riverbox up over 100,000. We had Dallas and Detroit now. Mm-hmm. And so um, at the time, uh, Jive Records was like, was like, you know what, man? We want another <laughs> album from you guys. You guys got this up over 100,000 now. We want another album. We, we were like, like, fuck! Fuck you, man. We ain't giving you another album. You, know, you guys never believed in us. You just put us out locally. We right. did the rest. 
And they were like, they tried well, putting out chicken buckets and all this bullshit. And all like, that shit. That we was, have, uh, we was have, ridiculous. Um, we have, uh, you know, they're like, we got a contract. You need to give us that album. At the same time, we told them, fuck you. We're not giving you nothing. There was a big standoff. And um, our manager was talking to Disney. Right. We didn't know We didn't that. even know it at the time. We had no idea. Or not. And uh, next thing you know, Disney's like, man, shit, we're Hollywood Records. We're owned by Disney. We can get you off Jive. That's no problem. Mm. So they got that Disney. They got money. like a, what's they'll called buy anybody. A, they just bought it out. Yeah, they got an override. Yeah. They got some points course, on the new album. Disney, you know what I'm saying? And they gave us a whole new advance. But what he's not saying though is like when uh, our dude Julian Raymond from Disney, you know what I'm saying, from Hollywood Records, bought us out, bought our contract out from Jive. You know what I'm saying? He was like, yo, check it out. Yes, we're Disney. But at the same token, we're our own company. Mm-hmm. Yo, Disney does not run us. You know what I'm saying? We run them. They'll tell you anything They're to like, get you go. No, 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 no. But he was like true to the form. You know what I'm saying? He was being honest as shit. You know what I'm saying? And we love him to this day for that. But you then know you what were saying? so offensive that Disney still like, had to take action. He's like, he's like, yo, <laughs> Disney owns Merrimax. Disney owns New Line Cinema. Disney puts out Jason and Freddy movies. Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't know that shit, but they do. Because it's on yeah. different, different companies. You know what I'm saying? But we got Hollywood records. Motherfuckers don't know that it's Disney, but it is. You know what I'm saying? But we run our record company, so don't worry about Disney. Yeah, basically, we got this. They, they assured us that they weren't going to fuck with the lyrics. The 100%. exact situation that happened. Exactly. <laughs> so when we finished the album. So we trusted the wrong motherfuckers. Yes. We handed the album in, and they gave us back. All the lyrics were all stapled together in this this. They Yo, had papers no and bullshit. they had it all highlighted. Everything they wanted changed. Fuck the Beastie Boys and the Dalai Lama. Was this the lyric that got taken out because of this? No, no. They, oh. they, that one flew over the head. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> it, it, that's, that's a different whole, record. That's that was a different album. So, that's a whole right, different right. record. Their whole system was so dumb. Word up. They had like that was know, a whole different scene where we said fuck the world. But we might say you know uh, we're gonna pull out the shotgun and blow your head off. They'd be like you can't say that. Can't so then we would say we're gonna whip out the bucket. And blow and your blow mama's your wig off. Did this kill like, your soul as a rapper to have to censor yourself? Oh, man. Now, that's the thing, though. We didn't. We mm. used the same shit, at just that time, more slang. At that time, like, now we look back at it like, holy fuck, why did we sell ourselves out? You know Free what I'm saying? Free internet. Yeah. But at that time, you know, all we did was switch it with slang words. Yeah, you know we said the same shit. They, right. you know, like you they, said, they instead of blow some, your mama's fucking face off, we'd be like, pull the bucket out and blow your wig back. We might get more graphic on the new album, I mean, on the new version, and they would be like, that's cool. You know, it was ridiculous. Whatever the fucking system was, it had no merit. It was ridiculous. Right. We'd say worse shit the second time, and it would clear. You know, they were ridiculous. Yeah, it was so, just dumb um, shit, man. Now we're on Hollywood Records, and we and uh, we and they, they passed they did the whole take record. Three songs. They did take three songs that were, we handed in with the new album and remove them completely. Right. Because you know when saying? I was listening to the album on iTunes earlier today, it there's feels like there's versions. a couple songs that were not on the there's original very, version. There's, there's different yeah, right, versions. Okay. There's different versions. Records pulled off. To this day, we do this shit live, and like we can't tell the difference between like the fucking OG versions. And right. you know, I'll mix them up on stage. I, I forget what the oh, fuck. Oh, okay. You're talking you know about the specific saying? lyrics, right? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? From the OG version to like the fucking like, you know, the switched up version. So we signed. And, but, but everybody loves it anyhow. It don't matter, especially right. when you mix them up. They and these days with iTunes, like that's the default that people are going to and shit either Word way. So. Yeah. so um, actually, when we signed with Hollywood, now we're on Hollywood. We're getting ready to do the new album. Our old one did 100,000. You know what I'm saying? We're right. ready to do this on a national label that actually believes in us now. And um, they put. Slash from Guns N' Roses, he played guitar on a song, and then they had Alice Cooper come in. Alice Cooper did an intro for us. Right. You know these are like these rock guys. Um, we didn't know who they. When we knew who Slash was, I didn't know much about Alice Cooper. And then the other guy from the Sex Pistols named Steve Jones, he played on a song. Right. Uh, you I'll know. tell you the worst story ever, man. It broke my heart. But this is the label thinking that you guys are going to yeah. appeal to a rock audience, so yeah, they have to exactly. embed all these rock stars this in it. This broke right? my heart because I was in jail, county jail at the time, and I, I talked to him on the phone on county jail. He's like, dog, you ain't going out to L.A.? I was like, I can't. I'm in county <laughs> jail. He's like, you didn't tell a judge that, uh, you know what I'm saying, you got business to attend to? I was like, yes, I did, but like they don't give a fuck. You right. know what I'm saying? So I missed all those sessions out in L.A. because I was in fucking college. I was jail. hanging with Slash fucking strippers. I'm sitting yeah. there in fucking jail. Give me that wild hour show, Slash. Ah. Did nah. you really party with him? Or was, nah. Nah. I was so fucking jealous, though. You I know mean, what I didn't know how to hang with no rock star, I was man. out collect every day with these boys. You know what I'm saying? They're right. in fucking jail. I was at Kinko's like, every night. Damn. Remember Kinko's? Oh. I was at Kinko's writing him a letter every night. And then I hung out with Slash. <laughs> 
No. But I did write him a letter every day, though. He did, though. Were you guys experimenting with drugs during the early days? Absolutely not. You weren't smoking dust or something? I just no. wondered, like, how. Like, it feels like you would have had to be in some there kind of altered state. No fucking <laughs> drugs, no alcohol, no Nathan, nothing, okay. nada. Absolutely nothing. You were just hardcore street like, kids, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. so um, the album came out. You know, it finally came out on Hollywood Records. The date came out. It's called The Great Malenko. We had an in-store tour planned, and then we had a concert tour planned. Right. And we're doing an in-store in Detroit. Must have been 800 people there. No lie. Our manager came. We had like a booth set up in the store. It was sweet. Manager came through oh, and was man, like, great. yeah, they pulled the record out of stores. You know, it didn't even really hit us. We're like, all right, man, get out of here. We got <laughs> autographs to do. You know, that sounds cool. You know, he left. We didn't even really, didn't even sink in. Didn't register. Said. You know right. what I'm saying? We're just like, oh, are we doing this in-store? We store, finished whatever the in-store when we got home. It started to impact us on what happened, but um, you know, we basically still didn't. I don't remember getting it that night, but in the morning, that's when I, we got it. Like everything was over. There was no more in-store tour. There's no concert tour coming up. Everything was over. And then me, him, and our now manager Billy, we just jumped in a fucking car. We're like, fuck it. Let's We're just drive to down to the beach. beach on the East Coast. Go try to Myrtle Beach for what? We don't know. Go find some hotties. Just relax. So, and we started <laughs> heading down to Myrtle Beach, and um, we got like halfway. We got and our like, manager called us. Yeah, man. our manager called and was like, "Turn around, man! It's everywhere." You know, the shit hit like the. He um, put a alternative press. All of a sudden, I got Kurt Loader telling me about it. Exactly. And shit. <laughs> shit when you found out about it, at the same like, time we found out about really? it. Really? Wow. We're yeah, like, that shit, that shit we pushed back. You know, hit what the saying? wire. Hit the wire. That shit. I mean, like, man, it was crazy. Like. You know, I'm talking about Rolling Stone is on one line, Spin magazines on the other. Crazy shit, crazy though. shit. You know, crazy shit. And, and um, you know, and we just were being who we always were. We're like cutting these interviews like wrestlers. We're wilding out. You Cut know, promos. Yeah. yeah. Cut, not even Let me tell you, you something, motherfucker. I'm gonna you tell know. you right now. You know, yelling at the <laughs> shit. And um, you guys are like the beginning of the rap wrestling comparison that I feel like every time I'm in a conversation about rap, I'm on the verge of starting to just compare it to wrestling. But you guys were like very early on that. Hey, yo, yeah, because we let me tell you in- something. Cutting the promo is way easier than talking. Let me tell you something right now, <laughs> motherfucker. Me and you outside right now. I tell you, <laughs> That's I, fine. you know, in um we, we we made that connection a long time ago because yeah. in Detroit, like we said, you had Kid Rock mm-hmm. who was riding in, in a track during this video. He had a cowboy hat on some overalls, piece of wheat coming out of he was like a a straight up redneck rapping. Right. And then you had this dude, Ishan, who was coming out on stage with 666 on his shirt and he'd come out in a coffin. You know, and he'd be rapping about the devil. Yeah. Like, we, we used to listen to that shit and make the sky turn That's red. Right. And you'd be thinking about The Undertaker, like, he did that too. <laughs> this is way well, before like The Undertaker. Really? So these strong <laughs> before characters. The Undertaker. I feel like right? Under- The Undertaker was on like 92, 91. No, he was around. Right. Oh, my yeah, the but Paul we didn't know fuck. We didn't know about that. We knew about Esau. This is right, before yeah, yeah. the Undertaker, goddamn yeah, it. Yeah. Before um, you knew, for sure. Yeah, so we you know, we, we we straight up, you know, we knew characters. This was the late were, 80s, like, man. Rap, rap in Detroit was about characters. Mm. You know, like there was a lot of showmanship, just like wrestling. You know, what's your gimmick? Right. You know, we had our gimmick. We're the wicked clowns. Esham was the devil. Mm-hmm. Kid Rock was a crazy redneck. You know, that's what the heroes of Detroit were, you know? So we applied that same. It, it's a lot like that now. Oh, yeah. Even if somebody doesn't have a gimmick, the gimmick's no gimmick. Mm. Their gimmick is not having a gimmick. But they're always soft rappers. That's, that's, my, really, that's your gimmick. Ba, 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 ba. Yeah. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Weird videos and shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's all gimmick, gimmick, man. That's your gimmick. Your gimmick is not having a gimmick. You know, it's crazy that like you, your having your face painted is the modern having your entire face tattooed. Yeah. There you go. Kind of. <laughs> you, yeah. and you know what the crazy you part is? When you pull that shit off, our faces are all tattooed. <laughs> yes. really? Got both. Oh, yeah. OG yeah. style, though. Out. Not like yeah, this right. new shit, but like OG style. I got like a couple shits. He got this you shit. You don't just done. have like a list of words on your face, like Lausanne or something? Yeah, prison, tat- <laughs> prison tattoos. Right. Not sound clappers. <laughs> sound clappers. Whatever the fuck it's called. So crazy. Yeah. So we, we, um, we got. It's funny because when, when, um, when, when we signed with, um, Hollywood, we got a fat ass advance for that album, mm-hmm. right? Then it got yanked out of stores, right? We know that. Well, then a bidding war happened with all these labels. Fucking chain, we met man. with Jimmy Iovine. We met with fucking Leor Cohen. Everybody. Wow. We met with everybody. all these different people, right? We ended up signing for over a million dollars for that same album, Great mm-hmm. Malenko. We got over a million dollars for it, right? So now you check it out. We got like fucking two million plus for the same fucking record. You know what I'm saying? After it was done. Right. That's at the cost of everything. We got two million plus. What are you talking right. about? For the same record. Malenko. 
Well, yeah, we, I mean, I'm talking about the second time. Yeah, we got over a uh, million dollars. So first time we got a million, second time we got a million. Right. So go ahead. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened was they go in our pockets, but we we're got on. It. Um, now we're on Island Records. That's right. who we end up signing with, right? So we released no, Melly. Malenko ended up coming out the way it was supposed to be heard, right? Mm -hmm. That shit sold over a million copies, almost two million now. It might have even done two million now, um, but it's been twenty years. Mm -hmm. But um, so Malenko came out, right? Then we put out the Jekyll Brothers. That's platinum, right? Mm -hmm. Now Island merges with Def Jam. Mm -hmm. They do this huge merger. So here comes Def Jam taking over Island's groups and bringing the Def Jam roster. Def Jam looked at us like, "What the fuck is this?" this Island, is still Def Jam. Island Def Jam was heavy Def Jam. Little bit island heavy Def Jam, yeah, and this is the Def Jam. this is when Def Jam was still like a crew, a label, House. like yeah. a yeah. very Power yeah. Cohen, Leo Cohen. Up. They're looking at us like, what the fuck is this? This is late nineties. Def Jam's looking at us like, man, two clowns. You know, I don't, I don't this get this like, at all. Right, you're the fucking man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Met the man, Red Man. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah. They don't want to fuck with us. You know what I'm saying? And, um, so what happened is crazy because we had two platinum albums, right? A gold album, and our contract was coming up for renewal. Uh -huh. They got to uh, renew it. And um, our attorney called us about a week before it, it expired. Days, you know? And he's days. like, man, Def Jam hasn't renewed your contract. Right. And we're like, don't say nothing. Yeah, we're, we're, like, you we're, guys like, don't we're, say like, we're like, we won't. You, know? you kidding me? So that day came closer and closer. Finally, that day passed. And then our attorney's like, still don't Ooh. say nothing. Every day that goes by is better. Mm. So four days after... The contract expired. Finally, we called. Um, we called uh, Def Jam. We're like, yo, once. <laughs> our contract expired. We're free to go, and we walked right off Def Jam. We're right. talking platinum ass. Skirted, we walked skated. right off Def Jam, and we Man. signed with another label for another million dollars. Wow! And check this out. That label, which was called D Three Entertainment, they put out the Both. six the six <laughs> Joker's card, right? And they went out of business. So we walked off that label, right? We're By the most now, luckiest, unluckiest motherfuckers right. in the world. Most people's experiences with, with major labels have been a nightmare. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, I'm still locked in a contract. They're fucking me. Man, we we got nothing but benefits in our time with major labels because we signed with a million dollar, for a million dollars three times. Yo, right. The benefit is we learned there's all fucking snakes, no question. But somehow we weaseled our way out of every contract we was ever in. Which is the opposite living. of how the average rapper from that time period would just end up in a contract. The label decides they don't like you. Boom. Fuck you. You're on the shelf. That could right. have so easily happened and to you somehow guys. Somehow we got out of every single. We're We've never been dropped blessed. from any label ever. Really? Never been dropped. These motherfuckers don't know how to market us. Mm. They put us out. Don't know how to market us. We just slap I mean, that last out. label we were on, they might have dropped themselves out of business, yeah, but they didn't drop D3, us. Yeah. Right. But do you, do you feel like it hurt you in any way that you didn't have a label like consistently pro, like no. pushing your product? But I agree that they would probably All have never been able to figure it out. All they did was how to do it ourselves even more with Psychopathic Records. Right. I'll tell you what, though, man. Like The whole time we're doing all that with jumping around those labels, we kept building our own label, mm. Psychopathic, because we were signing groups with them out ourselves. Well, you gotta, you gotta do something do with better. this money. You gotta start building a fucking empire, right? It, well, plus we had already... Uh, you know, we used to sell records ourselves. Yeah, so, so you're doing good so on multiple fronts. When when we when that last label went out of business, we were like, "Fuck, man, we we built up Psychopathic to a point now where let's release our next album ourselves." Right, and we did, and we've been doing it ever since. Okay, you know, and, and man, says D three, we never looked back, man. Yeah, we independent we, we got ever to since. Walk right off that label, no 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 override, nothing. We just got to walk right up because they just fold. They didn't even. They could have done so much. <laughs> they right. but they just fuck. went out of business and walked away from Yo. the record business. And we got to take our album with us and everything. The craziest shit. They, they just bounce, and we we were like, "Cool, good, right?" You know, give give us us back. Us, you know? And, and we just got really lucky. And I, I just want to say that, man. Like, I'm not bragging. I know how crazy lucky we got. We got lucky as fuck, we man. We got insanely lucky. Man. Any like, youngsters out there with your 360 deals nowadays and all that <laughs> shit? Yo, right. Independence, way to go. I don't know, like, like you know, God bless his soul, Mac Miller, you know, that type of shit. You know what I'm saying? Get it that way. But you, you, know you guys always had fans. But at what point did it start to be like, oh, we have this fucking insane cult that's like developing around us that is like in some ways bigger than us. Like it kind of goes beyond us. us, like beyond just it the love while, of our man. music. Like, it took a while. It yeah. took a while. Definitely was not from the beginning. We did not. 
There was no blueprint. There was no map. It feels that, like they took it upon themselves in a lot of ways. Did. Yeah, it, it grew this organically. wasn't in the blueprints. You know? it, it grew plan. organically from itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we didn't. Plan we did not shit. start from the beginning talking about yo. We want to have mad juggalos and we're gonna do this. We're gonna have a fucking gathering. We're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. You know what I'm saying? It just grew from itself. And then even the first gathering ever, we were panicking. We didn't know what the fuck to do because we like put some shit on a record, like talking about and the six jokers card, whatever the fuck. Some shit's about to go down. Mm. Or what was it? You know what I'm saying? We said, like, you know, everybody meet us at this location on this date. And we didn't know what the like fuck that. we was going to do. You know what I'm saying? And but I'll say, turn it up. All those the people came there. Was. We gave them flyers to the gathering or something. They were like, the gathering? What the fuck is this? But um, I'd say uh, that third album, when we signed with Jive, mm -hmm. that's when Juggalos started to call themselves Juggalos and say, Yeah, Riddle hey, Juggalo. And, and we They're started to see, yeah, you know, sure. Juggalos coming with their faces painted. Mm. That was like, Riddle box, our third album. Because you gotta understand something. We did um our first very first show in Detroit ever. Our very first show ever, not even in Detroit. Of course it was in Detroit. Was at it, this place called Todd's. And then the second one was at uh St. Andrews with Greasy. And the third one was this place called Magic Bag, and we sold it out. So our very first third show was sold out. Uh -huh. And you know then what we, Yeah, we, we didn't then come we went up like fucking, a slow come up. We we hit. Right in Detroit, in in been because we put like in that. work like a motherfucker. All we did, you gotta understand something, man. We didn't just sit back and like hope we'd hit. You know right. what I'm saying? All we did was put out flyers every weekend, clubs, fucking high schools, everything. You know what I'm saying? And then every time we did a show, same shit, yo. We're going maybe here. I don't. Maybe I don't think about that aspect, but it's true. That's all we did. The but hard work. Yo, yeah. because, because we're older days. now, we, we forget about that shit. But you got to understand, that's all we do. That's we really, ate, I think that's breathed, really the sleep, difference. Mm. Shit, because all that shit was insane clown posse. That's all we did. It was back like, in the day. we didn't have no money, but it was a full time job. Like, it was night and day. Like, it, it don't matter if it was Monday, Friday. I mean, we used to look forward to weekends just because there'd be more cars in it'd the be parking clubs, lots. Right. For we could put flyer, more flyers. You know? We wow. used to fuck the bitches at Kinko's just to get free fucking flyers. Right. So we could put more fucking flyers on cars. You understand? That's that? a beautiful thing when you're at that age, that when you're so passionate about something, you really don't have any reason to give a fuck about understand. anything else and you're just you going understand. hard for that one thing. Right. It's and such it a beautiful those, moment in your we life. We still it are just that. a different level. You know what I'm saying? We're not fucking the bitches at Kinko's no more, of course. You know what I'm saying? We go back to Detroit. And it's like we need to relax with our family. Only because Kinko's ain't around no more, though. <laughs> it still is a FedEx, though. There's all kinds of fast food chains that you can find some chicks at. <laughs> but yeah, they, we it don't takes eat fast that, food no hop, more, man. Yeah. It takes that freedom, okay. though, doesn't it? It takes yeah, that, yeah. that youth and the, the, being that able to do that before you have mad kids, mm -hmm. before you have mad responsibilities. You have but that yo, freedom. I had kids back then, too. The only thing that you drive. give a fuck about in the whole world is just making your passion happen. It's just like, if this doesn't work, then I'm going to be nothing and I'm a fucking failure and my whole life is useless. That, that's, that's a powerful feeling. You that should, is. Kids need to were, harness that yo, when you're fucking 18. Out, no. Don't think that that's going to be around forever. There was no safety net. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It was either this or nothing. You know what I'm saying? It was like either this or we just fall back on the dropout motherfuckers we were. Mm -hmm. honestly, you know what though, I'm saying? Honestly, this is my advice to everybody. It would be landscapers right now. There, there really is no or, though. You can't have an or. If mm -hmm. you have an or, you're going to find a way to it. Mm -hmm. You got to just know, I'm going to do this. This is it. You got to brag about that shit already. Like, what are you going to do? I rap. I'm going to be a rapper all my life. I rap now. I'm going to rap when I'm 60. Your mom might hit it. Your you dad might hit know, it. You got to fucking get in there and get it, though. If you, know? if you leave yourself even a tiny little opening out of it, gonna happen. you're going to end up squeezing your ass through that opening. You mm -hmm. know, you got to know there is, this is it. You're going to make it. That's it. Not Especially just rap. when you're young Not and just you're rap, capable. but the music business in general. You know what I'm saying? When, when, you, when you're capable of putting that kind of effort toward it, you know, when you're young before you got all those responsibilities... Man, that's the best time. That's the only time. You have to know you're going to have that. You know, mm -hmm. It's like we were talking about wrestling a minute ago. Undertaker, um, from, the time the we were, from the time we were um, like 13 oh, till 17, okay. all right, I, I bragged about we knew we were going to be wrestlers. Like yeah, you up, couldn't tell us nothing. Young teenager, that, from fucking like probably like nine years old up until like 16, Yeah, we were wrestlers. That was it. 
You know what I'm saying? We were independent wrestlers. We were talking about fucking writing Vixen Man letters when we were little kids, talking about like starting a little fucking sprout label for WWF. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We knew, I mean, like we knew. That's it. That's what like, we were going to do. In our heart and soul, we knew we were going to be wrestlers. Right. Now, Until the moment you decided to be rappers. Well, yeah. It started <laughs> to overtake us. Yeah. The, our, our passion for hip hop started to overtake us, right? Uh-huh. And we were like, um, we were like, fuck, man, I can't deny this no more. I want rap more. But mm. we denied it. We lied to ourselves for a long time. I remember the day, the day we accepted it. Fuck it. We're going we're gonna to do rap. You know, like the two, day. And that was his basement. What? It was like an epic decision yes, for us to say that out loud to that ourselves. Was Bam. We we're going to be rappers. Fuck I mean, rest, we put out like know? bullshit basement tapes, all that shit. But like that was the day that we was like, yo, we're doing this. And that's all we're gonna do. But, and that's what the fuck we're gonna do for the rest of our lives. You but, know? but the point the point I'm making is um when we switch not goals, but facts that we're gonna be rappers. Um when, when I was twenty six, he was probably twenty three. We had our first platinum album out, which was two years Great Malenko. Um we had already put that type of positive energy toward being wrestlers from from for me, age thirteen to seventeen. Yo, that crazy that shit, when I ahead. was when I was twenty six Wrestling came to us. Wrestling still right. happened because we had already applied that type of positive energy toward knowing all those years we were going to be wrestlers. Yeah. That even though we weren't chasing it no more, that shit came. Like the WWE called us and they were like, yo, we want you to do the ring music for this team we got called the Oddities. And we were like, yo, yo you don't know do you know we, we wrestled? <laughs> do you know we wrestled? They're like, what do you mean we wrestled? Our whole youth, that's all we did was wrestle. And, Independence, all that shit, man. And we sent them a videotape of us wrestling. Next thing you know, we were on a plane going to Stanford, Connecticut to wrestle for Vince McMahon. Right. But the, the well, all I'm trying to say is, man, like, you know, the, they call it the secret. They call it the laws yeah. of attraction. That shit is real. If you mm. know. You're gonna do something if you didn't know, know back it in then. Your heart, didn't know back then. Right. Like, like I say, we would have passed a lie detector test if you would put a lie detector <laughs> test on me at 15. Right. What are you gonna be doing? You know, I, I would have told you I'm gonna be a professional wrestler. I would have passed that motherfucker. I was that positive of it. Right. That's why this shit ended up coming to us, even though we weren't pursuing it no more. How long did the wrestling thing actually last? Or how many times were you on WWE? It's, Again, it's still we, here. We ended up walking still away from it. Still here. Yeah, we, oh, we, we walked away from it. We went to WCW. Oh, wow. Uh, we went back to the, we quit WCW. We went back to WCW until we were like, man, it became work. You know, because our heart is with hip hop. Mm. You know, yeah, we so had to once fly, wrestling yeah. became work. We was on tour and we had to fly every fucking Monday to WCW Nitro mm. and like fucking every Tuesday to Thunder. Oh, wow, that must have been intense. So like, yeah. the, the, the fucking the tour and shit would start getting ridiculous. You started you know, to realize so, like, fuck, maybe being a rapper started, is good. <laughs> then we started doing the house shows. So when we weren't on tour, all of a sudden we were on tour with fucking WCW doing house shows. Doing the whole tour, doing that shit, and our buses, paying our fucking buses for all that shit. At that time, at least, how was the money wrestling compared to the money from doing rap shows? Absolutely no money from wrestling. No money, right, and, yeah. and what's really hard about no hip-hop, money. I mean, about about wrestling is, man, you got 20 guys, and they're all, all jogged for position. position. They're yep. all like, you know, like... TV time, like one little fucking 30 seconds, all that like they're shit. All like, they're all fighting you know, for 20 it. 20 guys oh, trying to get that, you know, eight minutes of TV time if you're lucky. Mm. And in, in hip hop, we would be drawing the same crowd that for an hour. 20 dudes. Hour and Boom. 20 dudes are drawn all mm. together, and each one of them gets eight minutes in front of it. And if Hulk Hogan and that motherfucker, ain't nobody coming to see him. And we're you're selling saying? merch, and they ain't taking a percentage of it when yeah. you guys are in the venues and shit. And like, we're like, I mean, man, r- r- rap is much. And plus, man, the girls, there's so much more girls in hip hop than was oh, at God. wrestling. Wrestling you know, rats. There was you a lot wrestling more. rats. Wrestling um, pussy. I've never even no, no, thought no, about they, that. They right. Check it out. Yeah, there's groupies in rock and roll. Right. There's rats in wrestling. Uh, wrestling rats are like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious, man. No, I never thought about that. That's a big choice. That, I had nothing to do with that, though. Right. For real. No, but that had nothing to do with it. It's crazy, though, because the same logic that you guys used, that you were so confident that, that you could be or when you're talking about focusing on one thing and if you give yourself any little out then you're going to end up squeezing yourself through that i mean that's why you guys didn't make it as wrestlers like you probably would have if you but didn't have did rap on wrestlers. the table as an option you right. know no true that true because that. you 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 had that option I, I pay more attention to ufc and shit but that's one thing they always say is as soon as a fucking ufc star really blows up and they have the option to go be an actor 
they're gonna do it. They're their day is fighting are over because it's so much fucking easier. So you could probably easier, make just as probably, much money. Maybe why, more. You, wait, why are you gonna put yourself in a fucking ring and take a chance of breaking your fucking face open yeah. in your neck? You have to go in there every you know day and train like you fucking have nothing. When to you can just go fucking, you know what I'm saying? Just go, go like do some other shit where yeah. you ain't gonna fucking take the chance of getting hurt for real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I don't give a fuck. In wrestling, you take a chance every time you're in that ring mm. getting hurt for real. You know what I'm saying? Every time you're in that ring, you know what I'm saying? Same with UFC. Same with yeah. all that. Anytime boxing, kickboxing, you're in a ring, you're going to have a very good chance of getting hurt every time for real. I'm you always... Know what I'm and always, why would you put yourself on that fucking... Why, why would you put yourself through that? Exactly. When you can make just as good as money doing other outlets. It you know has what to saying? be the only way And out. sure, you know, you train your whole life to fucking get up there in that ring and fucking fight somebody. But... You know what I'm saying? If other opportunities not, why not take them? You know? I'm always just so fascinated by groups and rap and how they manage to stay together in a system that's so individualistic and it just seems so hard for people to stay together. Like, what the fuck is it that has led you guys to not ever stray? It's, it's two of us, man. We're best friends. That's why. I, I, I we, we talk about that a lot, you know? Big time. And um, It just seems so improbable that it could have worked out over such an insanely long period of time, you know? Yeah, it does, and especially you know bands and, and groups. Man, they fall out so bad. You mm. know what I'm saying? But um, we weren't put together by no label. You know what yeah, I'm there's a lot. There's a lot. We of grew up together, man. To yeah. why 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 we love each other like we do, man. There's a lot of factors. Best friends in the world, man. But we're legit best friends. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not a um, no gay shit. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a little. Right. But really? it's, 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 poquito. It's, that's a different podcast. <laughs> <Poquito>. <laughs> it's a, um, you know, a mutual respect, you know, and, and uh, I think a lot, a major thing it is because, because whether we're on tour or in a studio, it doesn't matter. We're together every single day. Right. If we're just at the office working on shit, we're together every day. Mm. And like, I check think, it out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Continue what you're saying. But like, I was just on the road by myself for like a month. I didn't see this dude for a month, and I just seen him today. I was like, "Oh my god, what's up?" Tell you, I ran across the parking lot. Ah! Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, it was the dopest thing. See my boy. I ain't seen him in a fucking month. You're like a dog like, when his owner comes back from war. I wouldn't go that far. No, we were like Not two owner. dogs. His other dog friend. We we're like dogs sniffing each other's asses. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Uh, not, hey, not, not either one of us are the owners, you know. What I'm saying, right. well, but, uh, yeah, you know, like um, a, a major part I think is is we go home at, at the end of the day, mm. and we don't go to each other's houses. You know, mm. what I'm saying, like, like um, I think that has a lot to do with it. Like, we tell each other about what happened at each other's houses. We we we, you know, but the fact that we're able to have a life apart, you know, at, at home, our mm. homes with our kids and shit, like you know, um. We're, like we're not as close with each other's kids as you think we would be. Mm. You know, I hear about we. I hear about his kids all the time through him. You know, he hears about mine and all well, those our stories. Our kids got big age different gaps, though. You know, say so my older kids are way older than your kids, and then my younger kids are way younger than your kids. You I, know well, I'm saying? not saying our kids hang out. I'm saying like it's just to, we're able to go home. Mm. That that I think has a lot to do with with how we're able to because we both have a life apart. Mm. From each other, you get what I'm saying. We Definitely. got our wives, and you know what I'm saying, our kids, and all that shit. We got we got our own like fucking life. You know what I'm saying. We don't really involve each other in that life, right? You see what I'm saying? No, like, I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So but it we keeps know it all sort about of each other. You a know little bit we more business related, like. But you guys no, probably no, no, no. were like sleeping in the same hotels, fucking in the van of together course. constantly until yeah, approximately yeah. what time period though? Um. Fuck shit. Man. Yeah. <laughs> we still are together, man. Word up. Yeah. We still share the same bus, everything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Not we, always. Not always. No, nah, we, we got separate buses, but sometimes we share the same bus, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Depending upon the do, tour and I'd shit. I'd say half the time. But you know, you know what I'm saying? It, it, I find out we're sharing the same bus. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. No problem. You know what I'm saying? Because we ain't going to fall out. Do you, you guys have any kind of like differences on tour that makes it so that you want to be on different man, buses? We got so many fucking differences. It's ridiculous. Really? But that was makes us so fucking good with each I'm, other. You know what I'm saying? I like Starburst. Legs Red Bull. You know what I'm saying? I have seen do? you both consume those products while you've been here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's he's married. You know what I'm saying? I'm 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 single. You, were while. you married for a while? I was, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, you know, we have different I'm we very have different, faithfully married, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. we have different, this boy like wilds out with his girl, you know what I'm saying? Uh, My girl bisexual. So <coughs> we same. get our swang on. Props. Ping. Same, bro. No props for being like faithfully married? I mean, you know, faithfully <laughs> boyfriended yeah, up. Yes, <laughs> fuck out of here, man. That, that's the best fucking reward ever. What, being a committed husband? Fuck yeah. That's good, yeah. 
with kids, get the fuck out of here, man. I'm, I'm a committed you. husband too. I'm I fucking commi- go to Grand Wolf Lodge and. <laughs> <laughs> I like that the netting. slang. You're like this. You're still sticking with that slang, huh? Netting. That's our Detroit that's slang. slang. That's Yo, like, oh, okay. I committed yeah, you know. to one netting. You know what I'm saying? What can I do? What do you it, want from yeah, me? That's like our. Um, a lot of those words. That's another thing I'd advise any rappers. Um, you know, rap is so much about swag, right? Mm. This is what I tell a young rappers right? now more than ever. I tell yeah. I tell rappers, uh, young rappers all the time. Why do your friends like to be around you? Because mm. they like you, right? They like whatever it is about you that they like find out what those uh the what those elements are and put them in your music mm. like put yourself in your music like little things you know about yourself because just like people like to gravitate around you in real life when you put those elements in your music people are going to want to gravitate around you that you don't know mm. they're going to hear those things and they're going to like that about you and want to be around you you know what a I'm lot saying? of times when you like get into an artist for the first time that is a big part of what endears you to him is like he's using That's weird it. slang he's talking about yeah. some place i haven't been he's fucking referring to his friends as some weird term whatever it's like all that stuff is the thing that makes you not a playboy cardi clone which is the problem for a playboy huge percentage cardi, of kids who are here. coming out right now playboy is, cardi. But, i mean they just <laughs> Hey, everything that the fucking most popular rapper out already says, and they don't add anything to it. It's like, how could you ever expect to stand out if you're not adding something or doing something different? Another thing that make make people want to like your music is when they can relate to something that's mm. not everywhere. Oh yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, for example, if we say Fago in our rap, right? Mm. Like, most people don't know what Fago is. But for the few people that are like, man, I got, we got fake on my hood, you know what I mean? People forget that that was like, I drink cheap ass fucking soda. Right, right. You know, this is that's cool. That's the equation to it, you know what I'm saying? Like it does not say you gotta why, be fago. It's your Fago's? city, the cheap ass like, shit. I grew up with Fago. Why are they telling you? Fago? I feel like you guys were almost like the first rappers to really be like, yo, I'm a piece of shit. I'm white trash. Let me talk to you about my life. Cause that didn't really exist so much at that time. And I think all of us are probably feel like that's us. Exactly. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And we just kind of hide from as much as we can. Mm. But man, sometimes it feels good to just say, "Fuck it, I ain't hiding, man. This is me. I'm a scrub. Mm. Scrub life. Word up. You know, like like. I think that's what endeared like the the center of the country to you guys in particular is because there's a lot of people in America in the flyover states who are basically like, "Yo." I work at the fucking construction me, place. I, I work at man. Wendy's. I am something. not anything special. These guys are speaking about the, my life. I'm not a rich drug dealer. Who the fuck is going to bust on you if you already bust on yourself first? Exactly, you know what I'm yeah. saying? What, what the fuck you leave open? Nothing. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Go ahead. Fuck with me. You know what I'm saying? Bust on me. I don't give a fuck. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I already did it for you. you and you know have to have that mentality to survive in like shitty fucking middle America cities. Like that's important. Like you have to eventually like build up that toughness if you are someone that doesn't necessarily fit into the mold, you know? I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I know we're a voice for a lot of people that that feel like, you know, that they're that they're, you know, you know, but I don't like it when people say to me, Hey man, you know. I'm a juggalo, man. You know, I ain't got a job. I ain't, I ain't doing shit, <laughs> yeah. but I'm a juggalo. Do fuck something that. with your shit. I'm like, man, that I just like got out of prison. I ain't mm. trying to do shit but sell drugs. I'm like, <laughs> juggalo. That, that sounds like a cop out, man. Right. Right. Like, 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 I, I want to see juggalos fight back. I want to see juggalos kick ass in life. I want to see Word juggalos up. stomp shit. You know, like, Word like, up. like reach their dreams. Like, Get out and shine. Yo, you know? Jay, man, I ain't shit. I'm a juggalo. Woo, woo. It's like, what? No, hold on. What's wrong with that? You know what I mean? I like, got five like, baby mamas. I don't pay child support. I'm a juggalo. No, you ain't. Has there been times where you've been watching like the fucking gathering documentaries that come out every year or whatever and they and you just sort of are like geez like some of these people are kind of taking our message and applying it in ways that like to just sit around and do drugs all day or there's a lot of people you, that you, you been, not, not at the gathering but there's a lot of people that like been like what juggalo is to what it really is you right, know what i'm saying yeah. like like we just talking about you know what i'm saying yeah ju- uh, you know juggalos. But, you know what i'm saying real juggalos know what the fuck fraud juggalos are you know what i'm saying reality, you're trying to better your life trying to better the people around you you know what i'm saying why not do that yeah you know what I'm saying? you sitting there dragging everybody around around you down and like you ain't doing shit for yourself don't claim juggler with that shit please you yeah. know what i'm saying Please Jug- juggalos are, are actually you we know, scrubs, yeah. We come for nothing, and we trying to get somewhere though, you know. Yeah, I find juggalos mad creative. You know what I'm saying? Like, I look at all the hustles that go on in the juggalo world, like the like people that design their own clothing, you know, and sell it on the internet. Like, uh, people. I mean, there's so many creative people, entrepreneuring in the juggalo world. There's such a vast world to the juggalo world. You right, know, yeah. we have this game. It's called um um. 
uh, what's that game that what's what's our game called? Martin uh, Lewis. Huh? Martin's Lewis. No, no, no. The uh, uh, insanity. Oh, Juggalos against the Senate. Okay, you got you got that game that came out everywhere. It's called uh, uh, um, fucking uh, hey, whatever the fuck against Sanity. Fucking uh, <laughs> you just supposed to the game. Mexican accent for a second. Card, card, <laughs> oh, Magic the Gathering. No, 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 no. no. Fuck. No, Some no, insanity. Uh, uh, fucking Cars Against Humanity. Oh cards yeah, 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 humanity. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, that game came out right. Well, we got a game com- came out called Juggalos Against Sanity. Mm. Okay, now when you're playing that game. And you going through all those cards and you get those jokes, right? You realize how vast the juggalo world is, man. Mm. Like, to get those jokes, it's like, fuck, man. Ju- the juggalo world is deep. Like, like there are celebrities that are only known in the juggalo world that are like juggalo celebrities. Right. You know? There are people making a living off the juggalo world, off touring sure. and playing the juggalo circuit. Sure. And you'll never read about them or hear about them anywhere. Feeding their families, everything. But yet they're living their dreams, selling music and merchandise in the juggalo world. Right. And, and, and you know, this person will never even get a review anywhere else. But yet they're selling music and merchandise for a living. Ain't that the dream for, for so many of us musicians? It's like, man, there's so much... Of that going on in the juggle of the world, that it really is a fascinating. And don't nobody know about it, man. Don't and nobody know about it. You know yeah, that's there's crazy juggalo shit about it. wrestlers that are known that are huge in the juggle of the world. You know, there's there's juggalo artists, rappers, bands. There's um, get artists, everywhere, everywhere. juggalo artists crazy. that are that, you know that draw juggalo paintings. You know that are killer paintings that are known in the juggle of the world. You okay. know, I interviewed Hobson maybe six months ago, and he was talking about that experience of like starting to go to his his first shows when he first started touring and realizing like, holy fuck, there's a lot of juggalos here, and like realizing like, well, like I'm not a fucking juggalo, but I guess I got to be cool with these people. Like they fuck with me, that's crazy. Like I, I mean, yeah. it's like there's a lot of artists like juggalos that. Jugg- up, juggalos, man. they they start to support somebody. Yeah. They embrace them as a uh, uh, as a fucking mass. They embrace somebody, you know, like they, like embrace, swarm on a motherfucker, they embrace you know? Ritz. They embrace Tech Nine, you know, and they just support them in unison. By, Shout out Ritz too. I used to yeah, listen to him all the time. Why going on Jesus. tour with us, man? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of uh, love in a, in a juggalo world, man. If they latch onto your shit and they decide to love you as a as a unit like that. Man, that's a lot of fucking love, man. Mm. I mean, they 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 collectively love you like that. You can make a whole career a just out of that. Career. You know what I'm saying? And if you bust out of that, you're gonna make an extra career out of that. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. But just don't forget where the fuck. But there's you a lot of careers from. living themselves out to just the juggalo audience, mm. and and you might not ever hear about them outside of the juggalo world. But does that really matter? Juggalos are what at the end of the day, people. Yeah. So if you say, well, I'm selling records and merchandise to people. And I tour to people. You, you only know, sell records to Juggalos. You only, you, your shows are only Juggalos coming there. So what? Yeah, so people come to my shows. People buy my records. Yeah, you have a you fan base. Says. Well, they want to convince you that if you're not constantly scaling and growing your fan base at a level that you could only really achieve with help from the mainstream music machine, that your career is irrelevant. It's like if you could put out, That's say, word, yeah. say you could put a fucking album out and sell, you know, the 50,000 equivalents through iTunes, whatever, through streaming, whatever. It's like if you could just do that over and over, it's like you might not be necessarily increasing your fucking fan base by some crazy rate, which is what the music industry wants to convince you that that's what you need to be doing to be successful it's a silly way of thinking about it everybody wants to convince you that their route is the shit you know what i'm saying everybody wants to convince you that that's the way to to do it you know what i'm saying like um you know uh you know one juggalo is probably worth i mean uh a thousand one juggalo is probably worth a thousand mainstream fans yeah thousand mainstream fans have a short ass attention span this is true know? like whatever the they're gonna leave you high radio, try that weekend you know that's what they're gonna bump and then when there's some other shit on the hot on the radio they're gonna forget about you as quick as they came you Yo, know straight up we do, juggalos we, will, will support you they'll be there to get your next album and your next one and your next one you know we do meet and greets and there's like three generations of juggalos at our meet and greets. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's, it's, it's fucking insane. You know what I'm saying? It's like Papa Juggalo, Middle Juggalo, Baby Juggalo. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes four generations. That's pretty Even incredible. a great grandbaby. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. That's wild. You know, yo, that's no bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Then it's fine. Justin Bieber fans. You know what I'm saying? Teenage girls. That's it. That's what you get. You know what I'm saying? 
we get from like old ass motherfuckers down to the babies. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And they're all juggalos. And it's fucking a beautiful thing. Yeah. Have you, you know said so we embrace it and we love it? It's a weird thing. I feel like around like 2008, 2009, I remember that documentary came out, the American Juggalo thing. And then it felt like it kind of like became a thing for a while to like make fun of the juggalos and it sort of became this like meme. Yeah, yeah. And I remember being like actually offended as not even just like a, a person who respects ICP, but just as a rap fan, because it's like, why, why are we like shitting on rap fandom regardless of how it expresses itself? Even if you're not it. into this exact style of music or whatever, if you give a fuck about rap music and you respect people who make this their life, like what is so fucking funny about these people being passionate about something? And I feel like even the magnets thing sort of played into that too. It sort of gave people of something to sort feed of on. Fun of, and yeah. I hated that fucking elitism so much at that time in particular. And that that was the only way that the mainstream felt like they could talk about what you guys were doing in such a way that people would pay attention. Well, you know, people constantly. Wow. Nice. Yeah, I don't well know where put. that came yeah, from. I had that in my head, head for a minute. Fun. I was going nice, to say, <laughs> no, because I was thinking about that so Yo, much like 10 years ago. The way you fucking put that right yeah, now is great, dog. Jeez, Thank you. I, I, I wish I would have said something too because I was stunned too. You Juggalos, nojumper.com. Thank you. I appreciate it. it. I was just like, <laughs> you got that shit, man. Thank for you. Real. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, you know, hey, man, I wish everybody was as open minded and, 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 you know, understanding as you are, man. Shit, this world would be a better place. We sat back when Miracles came out, you know what I'm saying? Magnus, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? We ride it off that fucking wave before fucking Gangnam Style came out. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Big million fucking views, all that shit. We were like, oh, shit. But then we sat back and thought about it. We are like, yo, why are motherfuckers making fun out of this? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Authentically, you know what I'm saying? Give him props. He wrote that line. Magnus, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? Because he saw it through the eyes of his fucking son. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, who the fuck? Are you to fucking judge that? You know what I'm saying? Mm. Through the eyes of fucking a young fucking boy. You know what I'm saying? Wondering how the fucking world works. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, being a grown-up. How the fuck the magnets work? Do you know? No. And I was saying that. I'm, I don't think anyone here could explain. how the, does, it, does it matter about the polar fucking yeah. shits? You know what they saying? don't go together sometimes. Sometimes they go really tightly together. <laughs> I don't know why, but they do. Right. Sometimes they push together. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Sometimes they pull together. The more I think Who about it, the knows? more I'd like for somebody to tell me how they work. Right. We can drive <laughs> UFOs off that shit now. You know right, what I'm saying? Right. Get the fuck out of here, you know? Man, yeah, you know, man, it, it, it's it's magnets are actually very deep shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, not that I'm a, a master of magnets because I'm definitely not. But uh, I, you <laughs> what? Know, You're not? No, I'm not. <laughs> But I know that magnets are like, um, you know, responsible for a lot of craziness in this world. A lot more than people may understand. Mm. Let me just throw a name out there and, and give me your thoughts on this person and how she might relate to the Juggalo she? ecosystem. Tila Tequila. Oh, come on, man. See, that's the thing. Old news. That's I know I it's old news, but it was so fucking funny I'll when it happened. Why, why it happened. I say that bra's life, man. Now, Juggalos <laughs> don't just pick somebody off the stage and decide I'm going to give them hell. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? If... if we have a lot of we've had a lot of greats play the gathering. Mm. You know what I'm saying? For some reason, some of them do fantastic. Other ones get pelted off stage. Some people go on their social media and say juffalos instead of juggalos. <laughs> some people what can you do? Yeah, some people are okay, let's say people start throwing shit at you when you're on stage. Mm. Some people are the type to grab a fucking soda out of the sky, catch that motherfucker and take a sip of it, you know, and throw it behind your back. They're going to love you for that. Right. Other people are going to be like, whoa, 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 stop the show. Stop the music. The next motherfucker that throws some shit up here, I'm fucking you up. What do you think is going to happen to that dude? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? People are, people are, some people are smart. Some people aren't. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Some people have class. Some people don't. It's the same thing on the stage, man. It's like depending on who the band is or a rapper up there is, and how they handle it. Is how all that's just gonna play itself out. I've seen people get now, busted in the head and bleed. Like, yeah, motherfucker, just keep yeah. going through it. Te te tequila, tequila's oh. credit. She actually handed, handled it at that moment on stage. As good as she could have. It's good. Like, I thought she did a good job, but her s s fate was already sealed <laughs> from earlier in the day. Her um, spelling K with a, or clown with a K. It's just something juggalos don't do. Misspelling juggalos. Really, that's a big no-no. All types of well, shit. Well, I mean, it just let her let us know that like, yeah, she doesn't really know what she's talking about. Like when she's doing that, and a couple ways she spelled things were like, huh? You know, like 
She was trying to appeal like she's down. Uh, I don't blame her for doing that. But she could have done a little more research. Yeah. But the whole shit was like we set that whole night up so good. It was called Juggalette's Revenge. You know, against the Juggalos. We had fucking uh, Tequila, uh, Tequila, Little Kim, and a couple other broads. You know what I'm saying? It was like the ladies' night shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Even uh, Sugar Slam was hosting that shit. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It was supposed to be Juggalette's Revenge. We getting back at these motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? Bitches are getting back at the dudes. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it flopped fucking <laughs> so hard. Because I like that you guys aren't scared to try out different things on such a, on we such tried. a scale. You know? It was her fault, though, man. She was putting out these crazy ass tweets. It was totally her back. Everybody, everybody else was up, cool Everybody was getting her. heated. You know what I'm saying? She, it was her fault. And right. then, like, her her last resort, where, like when people were, like, pelting her with shit, was pull their titties out. Look at these motherfuckers. And I think that's what sealed it. Like, that was what did it. Like, we don't want to look at your big fake you. titties. Nobody you know gives a like shit. They were like, Oh, like we're gonna stop. Like that's gonna put the brakes. And that's what a Titties? poop started coming Whoa, out. You know? Poop? Oh they shit. Were, oh man, they were oh, throwing man, poop. You know, let's not throw no more shit. shit. You know, that's what wasn't gonna work, man. You gotta yeah, that was that was a bad. Does that stand out to you as the biggest disaster from anybody that you've invited, like outside? One hundred percent. That was the worst no one. Wow. Yeah, no that question. was that was the most. No question. One hundred percent. But you know, like like you know, we've seen some of our heroes go down though. Oh man, man too short. You know? He got his fucking velvet suit, like a little bit of mud on it. He was like, "Fuck you, I'm out." Wow. Fucking Ric Flair bounced off stage. Fuck I guess I can't wrong. blame them. If they don't know what they're going into and, and all of a sudden what? you're Neither too short. We. <laughs> <Neither> <laughs> we. Before they go into it, we already pay them in full. We're like, look, man, if you feel uncomfortable or anything you don't like goes down, please leave. You know right. what I'm saying? We tell them that. You know what I'm saying? But Let's we also put them up on the game. We also put them up on game, though. You know what I'm saying? We're like, look, this is what might happen if you say this or do this. You know what I'm saying? But, we, it, yo, if shit goes foul... We're not mad at you. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Come on, how can you be mad at Ric Flair? Look at look at Buster Rhymes though, Ooh. man. He, he went up fucking the, killed it. The way he handled Him it was so star. dope. But he's more of a juggalo. I could see how the juggalos would appreciate Buster Rhymes pretty easily because he's sort of from you guys' era. He's more lyrical. I mean, yeah. I feel like he, but he makes sense more matter. than Tila yeah. Tequila. It don't matter, it don't man. Matter. Like, George Clinton went up there and fucking killed it. You know really? what I'm saying? Yeah, it's how you conduct yourself up there, even if you don't not familiar with the audience. As long as you're the way you're all you gotta do talking is, is sincere and you All you gotta accepting. do is type in gathering of the juggalos and look at it for like five minutes. That's mm. all you gotta do before you go up there. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you'll get it. You know what I'm saying? I remember that there were years where we would look at the bill and just be like, how the fuck are they affording all of these fucking artists? We didn't. We, we went bankrupt, bankrupt many a year. <laughs> <laughs> all the money fuck. we make throughout the year. We blow it together. Oh, okay. Right. And then we're broke again. Then we got a time to go back to work. Make right. all the money. And once we get some money in the bank, <laughs> blow you, it together. You think we again. got money in our pockets? Fuck no. So is, is the gathering sort of downsized in a sense that you're not going as huge as you Depends were previous years? Year, you know what I'm saying? Some some years it goes down. I don't, because I don't know about that statement. I, don't, I think we are going as big as we are. This year's called the oh, Super this, Gathering. This year, yeah. Right. We're going balls out. I this mean, year. you got to have some balls to call it the Super Gathering and then tone it down. It's right. the 20th <laughs> fucking anniversary, man. Yeah, but it's but 20 motherfucking years. You already put out the bill for that? The, Not yet. The lineup. We're, oh, they're, okay. lining, they're lining them up right now. We, we, and we're calling it Super Gathering with our chest out. Like, this is the Super Gathering. This is 20 years. It's like. Oh, I, it's the 20th one. Holy shit. Yeah, yes. it's Ooh, 20th wow. annual, anniversary. You know? That's serious. It's like I said. Um, 20 like, fucking years of the same festival over and over and over and over and over It's like you're fucking dead in 20 20 times over and over and over and over. Doing anything 20 years in a fucking row is pretty unbelievable, especially doing a festival that big. And you guys don't get any fucking credit for it in the sense that like everybody's on Coachella's we dick. We ain't or, looking for fucking credit, man. We yeah. looking for man, a good got, time for Juggalos. That's all we, we, we looking for. We got enough credit to make us the shit, though. Yeah, oh, yeah. Enough, yeah. enough cool people know what The Gathering is. Definitely, you know? yeah. And if The Gathering was too much bigger. It wouldn't be as special as it is. Mm. Get what I'm saying? If it was, if the whole juggler world was too much bigger, it wouldn't be as personal. It's as almost it is. like no sponsors allowed. You know what I'm saying? Like you right. know, I was telling you about like the celebrities in the juggler world. Things like I right. think it's all the perfect size where it can be like that. Yeah, like everything the way it is is so perfect. There's not a whole lot we would change. Right. Honestly. Like, the, if it was too much bigger, would it be able to be like it is now? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way things are right now is pretty fucking dope. Yeah. Like, you know, if you were to dive into the juggle of the world and start trying to learn it all, it's going to take you a long time before you learn it all. Right. Like, it's it's not shallow at all. It's deep. You know, and I, and, and I don't know how much of it would remain like that if it was too different. Right. If it was bigger or smaller. I think it's at a great size where it can thrive and be alive like that. Definitely. How like how hands on are you guys with stuff like 
the artists on the label or the the gathering the juggalos shit like that like it could how, be more hands on right yeah like is well, the, i'm in i'm in the studio with every fuck we're both in the studio with every artist that records with us you know say after the first record we're giving like you know what I'm saying we'd like dip out usually i'll just i'll sit in anyhow you know what I'm saying but the gathering always we're like hands on yeah we, we just every, go right anything right. that comes out of psychopathic we're super hands on we just go right over to my brother's office and sit down and start talking about who we should call See, start brainstorming it's really easy it's not it's not that we're planning anything um intricate we're just thinking you know what be the shit it's really easy, yeah. You know, because we, we're just like every juggalo out there, and what we think would be interesting. Right. And the crazy part is, everybody thinks that you know, what I'm saying we put a record out, we tour. That's all we do. Absolutely not. We got full time jobs once we're not touring and making records. You know what I'm saying? We go to our office and we sit there and we run a fucking record label. You know what I'm saying? Down to the gathering, down to all the artists on Psychopathic, down to everything. You know what I'm saying? We have our hands on everything, balls deep, you know? Has there ever been times where you guys ever thought about not, I'm sure, like, running the label or being involved the business side of things, no matter what, you would never step away from. But has there ever been times where you guys thought about just deciding at a certain point, like, you know what, we're, we're done touring, we're going to step away from putting Absolutely out? Absolutely not. It doesn't even no, occur not, to you. not touring, that's, we're going to tour to That's the silliest fucking thought ever. Anymore. Really? Fuck. That's, no, that's bold, though, because, I mean, at some point, everybody's got to, Yo, settle down, but it's Rolling pretty Stone amazing. Still you got, going? Yeah, but they're kind of a rare going? case. Is like, Pop still going? Who the fuck ain't still by going? By the time you guys are 75, like Mick Jagger or whatever, you probably will have at least thought about it. Uh, well, then, <laughs> then our holograms would take over. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, by, I, by the time we're 75, who knows what the fuck kind of technology would take over for us? You I know think, what I'm saying? I think I'll be gonna, out there with robotic legs and an exoskeleton. <laughs> we talk about it all the time. We both feel really great. Right. Like, like we feel good. Physically, like I don't think honestly, I think people are always gonna speculate and say their their own opinion. But in our opinion, I don't think we've slowed down at all. N- not I think in, anything we took not up on not. stage. I don't think we slowed down physically and also uh, creativity wise. Like I think we're putting out as much music as we always have. We're fucking um, killing it like we always have. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel that way. I don't know how anything's different. I don't feel any different. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I don't feel like I'm getting older. We're getting old. I feel like. Shit, we're, we're killing it. I feel like I, we're I feel killing like the game. We just started. Right. You know what I'm saying? It does feel this like that because you're really that in love career, with it. Huh? You know? yeah, if you're that in love with it, you feel like you still that you just started. Up. Man, this and is like, like, we, we, I'll still give money to do what the fuck we do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I will get a job whole, and give money. We work somewhere full and someone we're blessed enough to fucking do this shit right give now whole and get money for it. Yeah. To do fuck this. out my face. You know? We we work somewhere, I'd be a lumberjack full time. A lumberjack, just to be able to jack. just to be able to get some studio time, right? Just to be able to do this, mm. and then, so to get paid for the shit is pretty fucking wig blowing. Yeah, you know we would do this. We're we, we're not gonna wind this up anytime soon, man. We're capable unless some disaster strikes. We're gonna be doing this for a long. I got a two year old daughter, man. And I <laughs> stop high, fucking, man. fucking, fucking working. Fucking no, I was listening to the new album, and it's pretty crazy how many <clears throat> different directions you guys go in. Like at some points, I feel like I'm listening to like a fucking metal album during some parts of some songs. Sometimes it sounds like you're going in like a weird pop direction for certain parts of the production and shit. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just like impressive to see that you guys are still growing and it still feels like you're having a shitload of fun which is kind of almost bizarre yeah we are i mean yeah. we you know are bizarre you know? about it man because if the second you stop having fun doing this shit hang it the fuck up you but know what the kind of music you guys make yeah it would be really hard to imagine you guys you, phoning it in and not having fun doing it. the second it. you stop having fun recording and yeah. the second you're not nervous going on stage Get the fuck out the business. You know what I'm saying? Really? For real. You know what I'm saying? Every time we go on stage, butterflies. You know what I'm saying? Really? Every time you step into the fucking studio, fun. You know what I'm saying? And I understand other artists, like, what they go through, man. Because, like, man, I could not stand it if there was some, like, A&R guy sitting there like, I, gotta deal I don't with that. hear a hit on this record. <laughs> Can you guys picture go back in the studio? I just don't hear it. It'd picture be like, that. man, why don't you suck my dick? You know what I mean? Like, uh, I can't even imagine. In the back, motherfucker. You know what that man? shit would be like. You know, we don't have nobody policing our shit. You know, we police each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, man. I'll be like, yo, maybe you went too far on that one. <laughs> you know, oh, let me reel it back a little bit. Nah, fuck you. Suck my dick. You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, man. It, it, we, 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 I just want to say this. Not a day goes by. Honestly, I'm 46. All right. Not a day. I've been doing this shit. I'm like 24, man. Years. That's the craziest part. <laughs> 29 years, I think. 29 years. It's 2019. Right. 29 years, right? Not a day goes by. I put this on the creator. Not a day goes by where I don't analyze my life and think, man, I'm so fucking 
lucky. Like, like we are so blessed right. to be doing this and to both be like, be healthy and still murking it, still out here killing it and not even being close to like winding down or anything like that. That's not, not even in the plans. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, there's, like, there's no like, rep- there's no retirement plan. You know what I'm I saying? I mean, Nedens to me feel just as good as they did <laughs> when I was 21. With him, it still equates you know back saying? in Nedens. Right. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you gotta always. always find that thing that the, the law of diminishing returns doesn't kick in for. Yeah, like every time you fuck a new girl, it still feels really exciting, it right? It sure does, and I feel I feel accomplished. Yeah, you know what I'm saying I love man. If I'll there tell was you what, no man, you girls, fucking youngsters up in here. No, nah, not no I. Neddens, I wouldn't have came. I'll tell you that right now. Really? Yeah. If my dick fell off, man, I, I, that would be the year I retire. No, no if your dick fell off your or stopped off, working, that would be more weird. Focused. Like, you'd be everything more would focused. be different. You'd be more. You'd be. So hyper tuning the fucking insane clown pods if your dick fell off because you wouldn't give a fuck about Ned no more. What would be my inspiration, man? Inspiration? Every time I make a good I give song, it to you, I'm like, man. oh man, this is going to give me some pussy. <laughs> <laughs> this fucking guy. Yeah. So if your dick <laughs> fell off, you think everything would be the same? You'd be like, yeah, all right. Word up. <laughs> His dick already fell off. <laughs> my dick fell off years ago, money. <laughs> oh, man, that's fucking amazing. That gives me dry, man. I love being married and I love. Yeah. What do you guys hang out and listen to at this point in your life? Man. It, it, <sighs> new stuff, old stuff. It depends upon I like new shit, man. I like new shit. I love man. new shit. You know what I'm saying? I love, like, my, my daughter's 16 years old. She puts me up on all that fucking SoundCloud rapper shit. You know what I'm mm. saying? Now I'm in the front. Ouija puts me up on that shit. You know what I'm saying? I've just been on tour with him for a month and a half. I love that new shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, me too, man. My Otherwise, son, you'd be the grumpy ass. Get that shit off my face. You know what I'm saying? JJ puts me up. But I love old shit. school shit. I can't say their name, but I love them. Um, uh, drummers in your backward. Ray Schremmerd. I love them. <laughs> I love them. Yeah. And that is some feel good music. Like I put that shit on, I feel like having fun like that. I love that shit, man. That is though. First of all, them guys are real good musicians. They're man. crazy no, but, hit but, but, makers. Yeah. Yo, but, but for real, Bum B's last record. Come on, man. So made trillionaire. I love Ben B, Bun B, but I'm not. I don't know what his last album was like. Let me be on, honest. Made tr- oh, I feel man. bad now. That you man, like what it. about what about Scarface? No problems. I mean, again, Scarface. Have I listened to Scarface? I know, I'm in like the last ten years. years. I don't know. I'm, I'm dipping into Houston shit. shit. You know, what I'm saying? Like, old school, fan. new school. Man, I love him, man. I love him. I love him, man. It's like hypnotizingly good to me, man. Mm. Like I love it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I'll show you a shit. meme right now and make you hate him. Post Malone? <laughs> Does he, it says he looks like a germ. He's like, uh, <laughs> so I, I love a lot of new shit, man. I, I love a lot of new shit, man. I really do. Like, I, I'm, 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 see, I had the benefit that, you know what I'm saying? I get to take my daughter to concerts and shit like that, you know what I'm saying? So I get to see these motherfuckers, you know? Actually, Post Malone is crazy shit. It was, it was like three years, two, two, three years ago, I took my daughter to see Justin Bieber, hmm. you know what I'm saying, at the fucking at the palace, at the arena. And Post Malone was opening for his ass. Um, and this is before anybody knew who the fuck Post Malone was. Yeah. And I asked my daughter, I was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He had like fucking green braids, like, you know what I'm saying? The grill. I was like, who's this fucking homo? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. I'm sorry. <laughs> and my daughter bitched me out because she's fucking a young teenage girl and she has homosexual there's a, there's friends. There's a soundbite for you. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, he's but a, she didn't know that. You know fashion. what I'm saying? Now she's like, put me on again. She's like, yo, you better shut the fuck up. That's Post Malone. You know, I'm like, I'm mm. like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? What's uh, is there anything rap wise that she's put you on that that really stood out to you as like this dude's dope? <sighs> I was trying to think of that stripper fucking bar anthem. Yeah, God, he's it. talking about a new rapper that has a strip club. Brand anthem. new. I was like Thotiana. We just said like, on no. that fucking vine, man. It was like the, the, it was like a vine. I was like, I didn't know they allowed fucking cameras in stripper bars no more. You know what I'm saying? It, 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 oh, what the fuck is it? It's sounding even more da, like Fatiana now. Da, da, da. Oh, fuck. It, it's that dude like halfway fucking singing. What the fuck is his name? It's going to drive me fucking nuts. Go ahead. I'll figure it out. And that one that uh, Ray Shmurmy, whatever, <laughs> whatever they did with uh, Post Malone, that song they did school, together, uh, Sun, uh, Sunflower, man, I love it. You know what I'm talking about, Josh? That fucking shit. The, the, the strippers were dancing to that shit. We were watching that fucking vine. It was on late at night. He said, listen to him. That what's that song strippers dance to? That's like every fucking song. No, man. Vine hasn't even existed for like five Yo, years. <laughs> you don't even see vines no more. You know what I'm saying? This it doesn't was exist. Fucking vine. Like, it was like three different fucking stripper shits to the same fucking song. God damn it. What the I fuck? I feel so it? bad that I can't be the one to fill you in. Pause. All right. Pause it. <laughs> <laughs> so, man. um, man, like, 
Is this you guys' first official like Los Angeles media run in many years? Like I, I don't recall you guys like playing shows at years. like the region and shit. Like that that's kind of crazy to me. Like, in a few years, yeah, downtown LA I ICP there. show doesn't just, sound just, like it happens just, every day. Just just since our last album, you know what I mean? Like uh, we haven't put an album out in like four almost years, four years, four or five now, you know years. What I'm yeah, yeah, I was seeing it. it's been a so, while. Yeah, it's been a minute, and and I think this is like the longest between Joker cards. You know what right. I'm saying? This is the longest uh, that it's ever been. You know, but we've released music. You know, we just been doing a stupid amount. Of touring lately, yeah. really dumb amount, man. Yeah, and uh, uh, you know, we 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 get home and be like, man, we're gonna take a break. We ain't going back out of the road for a minute, and then a month later, we'd be right back in the bus. Like, what the fuck happened? You know what I'm <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. We we've been doing a lot of touring, you know. Plus, we went back to Europe. We went back to Australia. We haven't been to neither one of them places in a minute, too. We went back to both of them. That's you know what I was telling our publicists earlier today. It's like I was just in Houston yesterday. You know what I'm saying? I had a flight at six in the morning. You can't go to fucking bed when you got a flight at six in the morning. Mm. So I got like a half hour sleep on an airplane, you know what I'm saying? Still going today. What can you do? You know what I'm saying? And then fucking tonight, and then we got tomorrow. You guys are built for day. it. That's, that's right, what the man. fuck we do. Mm. We uh, that's what we do, man. I mean, you've you know been doing saying? it for all these years, and I, I just like that mentality you guys got. It was like, hey, maybe the fucking machine ain't trying to see us win, but we're just going to go as hard as fuck. Like, I, we're little kids still, man. I fuck can it. Tell you it's this right now. To go hard as fuck we right now. both have mad muscular necks. From going like this all the time. <laughs> the, I can see it. Yeah. More like that, but like, <laughs> me like to the music. <laughs> nah, Fucking man. Crazy, yeah, man. You know, and and, and, we, and we've been going to strip clubs since we were eighteen, man. Mm. No, like, no, no. You know, since I was fourteen. <laughs> I just put on fake we've been mustaches. Going to strip clubs and, and that's the place to go, especially nowadays, man. That's where you always get hear the latest music and mm. shit. You know, that's really how we stay plugged into a lot of this music. Latest netting. Club, you know what I'm netting. Can I just say it like it's spelled netting. or netting. netting? I have to leave out the G. Know, right? no, it's not. Netting. Yeah. Netting. Hey, was Fat Sweaty Betty a real person? No. Uh, yeah, in a porno <laughs> magazine. In, 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 the, in the magazine, we stole her picture yeah, out of absolutely yeah, somewhere. Yeah. There's, there's Good thing we never got sued for that. It's so funny, like, re listening to on, the on, old on, albums. On. Hold on, say netting. Netting. No, not netting. 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 No. Netting. <laughs> What are you netting? N-E-D. Netting. Netting. Not netting. N-E-D-E-N. netting. N-E-D-E-N. There you, there you go. go. Netting. 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 Like a like a wedding? Oh, I guess the same. Like a, a but not no wedding. Like, like pudding. wedding. Like say pudding. Pudding. There you go. Netting. Netting. There you go. Ah, there it goes. I think that's the Bam. only thing we're calling pussy from now on. Netting. netting. Yeah. Netting. Why would you call it anything else? Or erase vagina from my netting. my vocabulary. Yeah, vagina's good sometimes, but like netting. That, yeah, if you're in a gynecologist office. That's like smurf talk, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yo, it's there's so many like crazy catchphrases weird phrases things you said on the old albums that has been stuck in my brain for like 20 years and still saying like man. the fat sweaty betty thing i still say that like about a fucking fat girl like nothing like <laughs> fucking fat sweaty betty over there and i'm listening to you guys old shit and i'm just remembering like oh there's a reason why i still call people dick anus <laughs> wow, dick anus. and then we're, we're watching the fucking videos earlier and i'm like that's why i say that i totally forgot <laughs> You know, it's funny, man, is is our albums, I think, still have as it. many, you know, nut sacks on them as they did back in the early <laughs> 90s. Word up. Like, yeah, just as many little kid fucking scenes. Yeah, yeah, you ever worry? I, I, having met you guys, I don't worry about this at all, but you ever worry you're getting too mature for your own material? Or Absolutely no, man. <laughs> no. That's what I was going to say. Kids this be shit saying is nitty. still just as funny, man. Yeah. Like, when are nut sacks going to get played out, man? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when are we going to grow up with that shit? Another thing, man, like, I talk to my kids. And it's hard, man, because I tell them, like, you guys, dad has the mind of a 16-year-old. You know what I'm saying? I'm doing the same thing I did for a living way back then. Mm. I'm still in that world. You know what I'm saying? I ain't about to say. There we go. We just getting them. But, yeah, I don't even give a fuck. Like, I just curse in front of my kids and whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My older kids, it's so fucking weird. I got uh, 22-year-old twin sons that are in the Army. I got a 16-year-old daughter. Neither one of them that I curse in front of when I talk to them or hit, never, you know, never spank. No, no, I don't beat this shit on my kids. Don't right. get me wrong. Yeah. But like my two young kids, you know what I'm saying? I got a four year old and a fucking two year old. I spank the shit out of them and I curse in front of them like a drunken <laughs> sailor. I don't know, just a different time. You know, I don't know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like my older sons, like back in the day, if I used to curse, they were allowed to punch me in the face. You really? know what I'm saying? Yeah, word up until they got bigger. You know what I'm saying? I, it, like, that started hurting, you know? What is it like, in a very general sense, I'm sure you guys have anecdotes about this for the rest of your life, but what is it like raising a kid when you are one of the two creators of the Insane Clown Posse? Like, what, there just must be so many strange conversations over the years of them beginning to for understand. Me, for me, not really. You know what I'm saying? Because they just slowly get used to it. Yeah, you know, I don't know what it is. 
like he's got a whole different story than me, you know what I'm saying? But like even my daughter right now, 16 in high school in like a very rich, affluent fucking Michigan suburb, you know what I'm saying? In right. Birmingham, you know what I'm saying? And uh, she don't have no problem with it, you know what I'm saying? Like I don't know if she keeps it a secret. I don't know the kids. My, my kids keep it a secret, you know what I'm saying? But like my older sons, I think got it a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Like picked on some, you know what I'm mm. saying? But they didn't have no fucking friends. They didn't give a shit, you know what I'm saying? Different they're era. Like, they were like then, fuck too. everybody, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. My daughter, she's kind of the same way, you know what I'm saying? But uh, my, you know, my youngest son, he's in preschool, so you know he don't fucking know yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, I t- my favorite thing to do is come home when the kids got friends over. Man, you know I got a I got a uh, I blow all my fucking kids. A fourteen year old son and a twelve year old daughter. You know my my little girl will have a couple friends over and I'll come in with the paint. She'll be like, "Hey, dad," you know what I'm saying? The friends are like, <laughs> <laughs> and don't even fade, hurry. Uh, exactly, see, you know what I'm saying? Man, you know, I, I just, I've, I've been telling the kids. Like, My kids grew up with it, you know what so I'm saying? Yeah, you, you don't you know, leave your work at home. You still show up at the house with the paint still on. Oh, word up. Like, I, I paint up at home, home to go out. I, I, I gotta check. I gotta scratch my face and I'll have to stop myself and be like, <laughs> I just did that about it. I was like, oh, right, yeah. my channel. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? I, I got paint on right now. You I know dream with the shit on, man. Like, yeah. you know, it's just so often. I, we've been doing so long. Our kids, like, yo, we paint up the fucking house before we go out and do like shows, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck we gotta do in Michigan before, you know what I'm saying? We film some shit out of our office, whatever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? I'll meet you up there. I'll paint up at home, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Our kids don't look, they know it. You know what I'm saying? They don't even look at us fucking sideways, nothing. You know? I assume you guys must have it down to a fucking science. How long does it take? Shit, it takes me about only eight minutes, I'd say. Eight? Yeah, about 15. Do you have 20. stencils? For, no. No? No. Okay. no. That's My shit's a little more precise than his, but the, you know what I'm saying? Like, it takes me about 15, 20 minutes. Right. You ever, you ever just feel like, why but, the but, fuck but, am but, I still doing this? Depends about, how, <laughs> depends about how much beard I got, though. You right. Know what I'm oh, saying? yeah, yeah. The more beard, the more fucking I, I, more I paid a check 100 bucks to do this today. I got, like, it's a, fucking, I got like a Don Johnson going right now. You know what I'm saying? I, so, I'm jealous about, like, um, people that could just be, oh, ready for yeah. a photo shoot? Hey, Rick. Right. You know, like, <laughs> we're always like, we got to get ready. You know what I'm like, you saying? Know what like, saying? Or like, we're on tour, you know what I'm saying? Like, our openers and shit, you know what I'm saying? They just go out and what the fuck they was wearing. Just yeah, they just, uh, you know what I'm saying? We got to put yeah. a paint out. We were stage clothes. We, you know what I'm saying? We do this. We put a show on. You, know, you go back and, like, these motherfuckers still wearing the same shit. They just got off stage and just, like, marinating. And you're like, what the fuck? I mean, you that would be so. You put stage clothes I, on? I can't even imagine how easy that would be, though, man. Like, I'm so used to having to get ready all the time. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, but, you know, it's, it's our face, man. I feel mm. naked when, like, like, I feel naked with it. It's so shit, natural man. now, you know, you know what I'm saying? saying? It's so natural. Sometimes without it, if, if like people start to come up and talk to me, you know, I get nervous if yeah. I don't got it on. If I got it on, I'm cool, you know what I'm saying? But if I ain't got it on, I start to feel like I got, ain't got my shirt on or something. It's crazy saying? to me because I'm over here shocked that you guys spent 10 minutes every once in a while to put the makeup on, whereas like I see my girlfriend spend an hour doing her makeup all the time, and I don't think shit about that. Yeah, but we've been doing this shit for 20-plus years. Yeah. I could do it in my sleep. Like, I, seriously, I could like put the shit on. I'll admit, it, I'm not it, like the it, deepest it, it, it. into like the Juggalo conspiracy parts of the internet, but I have seen like threads online of people being like, "Check out this compilation of photos that we have of them without their makeup. Look at them at <laughs> dinner with this dude." And like, you know, you can. Who t- gives a fuck? I know, but I just thought it was so crazy to like. It must have been many we're years ago when I saw early. this. We we're just saying this early. You know what I'm saying? It's like, yo, you catch me at the fucking at, at Walmart. You want a picture? Sure, all day. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yo, but if we're doing some like professional shit and we're doing anything ICP related, yeah, yo, we paint up. That's it. And you know what I'm saying? You don't never catch us without it. The one thing that don't exist is shots of us painting mm. or removing. You'll never see You'll that. You'll never see 100%. that. That's good. You know I'm saying you're either gonna see us see without it or with it. You're never gonna see the transition. I like the respect for the theatrics. You know, a lot of people like all, all the the institutions in our lives have like slowly been crumbling. I like that you guys are still committed to the sanctity of that ritual. I remember we used to dip in and out of the venues with wrestling masks on and shit, trying to hide. <laughs> Yo, all back time, in you know, the yeah before the internet. Fight the internet. That's like, oh, oh man, fuck, man. We Word used to up. wear the mask all day long, like the wrestling mask all backup. day long. You know, constantly trying What's to trying to lay low. You know, we we were battling that shit, man. You know, and then it, it, I remember when shit first started getting on the net with, of us with no paint on and shit. You know, oh fuck, you know what I mean? Yeah, battling it and shit. I'm glad we ain't got to fight all that no more, man. So, one last question: Do you guys? There was never, and I feel like this is one thing that probably usually rips groups apart. But there was never a time where one of you guys became like an addict or got too into a substance or anything. Oh yeah, I used to be a hardcore <laughs> alcoholic, man. Oh okay, hardcore alcoholic. What was that like for you? And when did it end? It sucked, man. You know what I'm saying? It was the worst ever. You know what I'm saying? In, in a it, yo, I, just, I pulled myself out of it. You know what I'm saying? 22 rehabs later, all that shit. 22? You know, well, not really. But wow. You know what I'm saying? A lot of them. That's incredible. You know what I'm saying? And, and 
Yo, I got to give it to my fucking best friend right here because he never gave up on me. You know what I'm saying? Through my worstest times. You know what I'm saying? Wow. I was doing shows, falling off stage. Didn't nobody know but him. You know what I'm saying? And then, of course, there's the obvious lifesaver. Or, uh, yeah, fruit Starburst. Starburst, fucking Starburst edition. Starburst. That, that's We're a real edition, that huh? Because <laughs> I know you have like a little ritual with your boy where you just throw him the pinks. <laughs> That's like, pretty dope. He's like so cold with the I don't eat the pink ones, man. <laughs> they just I, that's everybody's work. favorite. I like the fruity ones, not the fucking strawberry ones. I like he likes too. everything fruity. I like all of them, to be honest with you. But I mean, you know. <laughs> not being a pink ones. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. <laughs> hey, I mean, it was a fucking just such a huge honor to get to interview you guys. I really appreciate it, honestly. It was fucking Brother, we're, so we're, tight. We're very, very honored to be here, man. We're very, very appreciative. No doubt, you, man. man. Thank appreciate you. And we thank you, like, to no end. Can, I, can I just tell you a quick tiny little anecdote about me being in eighth grade and being an icp fan bring it of course my first halloween that icp was a part of my life so what am i gonna dress as okay i'm getting my, my face paint done right there's a kid that i had an issue with because he had the the prior year he had slept over my house and stolen <laughs> some of my know. jinko jeans oh so shit this Jinkos? will help date you the time period it's like God 98 damn. yeah after school, it just so happened to be Halloween, and after school, hold I on, end hold up, on, hold on. What if I got up and had Jinko jeans on? Right oh, that'd be so <laughs> sick. <laughs> then I start whip kicking motherfuckers. There's no way that you would have been able to walk in here without me being like, are those fucking Jinkos? <laughs> no, but anyway, so it just so happens to be Halloween, eighth grade. I have to fight him in the woods after school, and you know, it's like in it's, the woods. It's not really your choice Is after this school. The school in the woods. It's like down the street. It's like a half a mile down oh, the street. Shit in the woods. I'm in the fucking woods fighting this kid and my mom just happens to be driving down this road and sees me and my friends in the woods and she describes this even better than I You were so deep in the woods. She turns down this road, drives down and sees her son wearing smeared juggalo paint on top of another student, (laughs) punching him in the face. How'd she know that and was Jinko you? Jeans. She just said, get the fucking car out of Let's go. <laughs> she was so mad. And it was over Jinkos, yeah. How did she know that that was you, though? With the face because face? I rode BMX bikes. And so she fucking turns. She sees like a bunch of oh, kids on BMX bikes. Woods, we so. were the little BMX rat uh, mob. Yeah. yeah. And so that was always. The old woods trick. <laughs> I just sent her a picture of me with the paint on. And she's like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, you remember the insane Jinko, clown posse? Bitch. And she's like, yes. I'm like, I'm interviewing him. She's like, wow. That's, that's See, amazing. I'm huh? surprised she's getting on front right now. Get in the fucking car, uh, Adam. That would be so what cool. <laughs> Stop talking to those though, psychos. <laughs> what she didn't realize is that when she saw you on top of that kid punch him in the face with your own smeared face paint, she should have known my son's a winner. Yes. You know and he's going to take that energy and channel it into something down the road. That's right, man. Right there. Yeah, just sorry. that view of you beating the hell out of a kid in eighth grade, smeared makeup now, let on, me ask you this. jeans. Hold on, hold on. One last thing. Let me ask I you I regret that. nothing. Why is it that when somebody wins at a fight, they're like in the wrong? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Let's say you're pulling like past somebody fighting, the dude on top beating the shit out of somebody, you automatically assume mm. they're in the wrong. Yeah. Maybe the dude on the bottom says something fucked up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That goes back like since like we were kids, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, I, I didn't get we, that. Like, I didn't take that from it. I took it as yeah, kick his no ass. No doubt. Chuggalo. So did I. So did I. <laughs> so did I. Kids ass, but I'm saying though, but my mom was mad. Like, if I was on the ground, she would have probably got out and tried to save me. But every That's time back in the day, I mean, probably not like to now, you know what I'm saying? Like like you know what I'm saying? People are driving by and see somebody beating somebody up, they automatically assume mm. dude beating the motherfucker up. It's the bad guy. It's all about optics, too, because it's like if you're the big dude and you're on top of the small guy, your immediate reaction the is like, look at him, he's getting shit. bullied. This is yeah. fucked. Yeah, the but, small guy talk mad shit. And so that's why knock I, him the fuck out. That's why like half the videos you see of a fight, it's like he called him the N-word. It's like, oh, well, shit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's why that's ass with. That's why they add that, yeah. <laughs> Very important detail. You can do whatever you want to him if he said the N-word first. <laughs> oh, that, that that rewrites everything. Yeah, that explains. Okay, okay. Then yeah. he just turns ah, that deserved it, yeah. <laughs> all right yo i that appreciate you guys so much for real thank you my man my man hey we're real man I, I, and the show tonight too i've never seen you guys live before so this is gonna be ridiculous this ain't like a full-on icp show no we're, we'll we're, gonna fun, we're gonna have yeah, fun though we're gonna have fun out there having fun tonight you guys don't smoke weed anymore either i don't smoke weed. I, I, I just got off probation so i started smoking again. oh shit big That's backwoods right. He's got probation icp woods it's going down psychopathic blunts yikes <laughs> no jumper coolest podcast of the world check us out on youtube soundcloud itunes Peace.